Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Brandon Baez from ChichaChicka.com here with another amazing, fantastic Photoshop tutorial. Last week I promised you guys an extra tutorial because I didn't get to Tutorial Tuesday on time, so here I am giving you another tutorial. And before I get into this tutorial, uh, if you guys could do me a quick favor and like this video and favorite it or anything of the sort, uh, that would be really helpful because I really enjoy knowing that you guys like my tutorials and all of that good stuff. Uh, it really makes me feel good about the tutorials. And now that you've been liking our videos so much, Eli is willing to make some Sony Vegas and After Effects tutorials and so on and so forth. So again, like the video, favorite it, and yeah. Today we're going to be going over making our logo because a lot of people have been asking how I actually made my logo or if I could give them the brush for it or stuff like that. So I decided to just give you a tutorial on how to make it yourself. And in case you don't know what our logo looks like, this is what it is right here. And as you can see, it's nothing too complicated. It's just these four arrows pointing inwards on each other, or however you want to phrase that. And yeah, that's really all there is to it. It's just these four arrows. So without further ado, I guess we'll just go right into this. So we're going to start up a new document. And since we're planning on making this into a brush later on, we're going to go with a 2500 by 2500 uh, width and height with a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. And the background contents, we're going to go for white today. So once you've got those settings, we'll go ahead and hit OK. And I'll just hit Control-0 to zoom into 100% there. And so, as you can see with our logo, the basic concept behind it is arrows. So that's just what we're going to use as a starting point, is making an arrow. So to do that, we're going to go over here to the Custom Shape tool, and then we're going to go up here to the Shape and click the little drop-down arrow, and we're going to make sure that we have this arrow right here selected. It's called Arrow 9, and if you don't have these arrows, just go off to this little side menu right here and go down to Arrows and give that a click. And when this little replace current shapes with the shapes from arrows thing, or whatever, whenever this thing pops up, just hit OK, and you'll be set to go. So we'll just double click the arrow 9 right there, and we're just going to start somewhere in the top left hand side, and click and drag while holding the shift key. And we're going to make this fill up the entire canvas like so, and let go to finish that off right there. And so once you've got your shape drawn, just go over here to the shape that was created and give that a right click and go down to rasterize layer. That way we can work with this a little bit better. And I want to go ahead and center the arrow on the canvas and to do that I need to go over here to the move tool or just hit the letter V and we'll select the canvas by hitting control A or command A. And we're going to go up and click these two icons right here and that should center it perfectly for us and we'll be set to go. So now we need to deselect the canvas by hitting control D or command D for you Mac users out there and now we're gonna go over here to the rectangular marquee tool and we are just gonna click and drag a box down the lower half of the arrow like so and I'm gonna zoom in on the point just to see where the the halfway point is and using the down and up arrows on my keyboard, I can just position the mask so that the little uh, line right here is just below the point right there. And so I'll just hit the backspace key to delete that lower half like so. And so now I can just uh, deselect that by hitting Control D. And now that we've got the lower half of this arrow chopped off, we'll go ahead and chop off this back end of the arrow right here to get the upper portion of the point for the arrow that we want to uh, pretty much create. So we'll go over here to the polygonal lasso tool and then we'll zoom in on the front half of the arrow like so. And so we're just gonna click somewhere maybe about a third between this point and this point down here so maybe right about there. And we're just gonna go up and to the left to um, maybe right about there looks pretty good right there. So now we'll just click somewhere over here, click over there, and use the space bar to click and drag the canvas over there so we can see what we're doing. And we're just going to click around until we get all the way back to the original point like so. And once you've got this back end of the arrow selected, just go ahead and delete that with the backspace key or the delete key if you are on a Mac computer. And again, we'll just deselect that with Control D, and we'll swap back to our Move tool, and we'll move this arrow off to the left while holding the Shift key, and we'll just put that a little bit more in the middle right there. 
And so the next part of this is to duplicate this and flip it so that we have the other half of the arrow. So to do that, we'll just duplicate the layer by hitting Control J or Command J. And we'll bring up the Transform tool with Control T or Command T. And we'll right click somewhere and say Flip Vertical. And then we'll just click and drag this downward while holding the Shift key until it snaps to the bottom half of that arrow like so. And we'll just use a little check mark up here to commit those transformations. And then we'll zoom in again on the point of this little arrow until we see all the way down to the pixels like this. And as you can see, this is a, it's a rectangle, not a box, which means it's going to look a little blunt rather than nice and pointy. So we're just going to use the up arrow key to move the bottom half of the arrow and make that into a nice point. And so that should be good right there. So making sure we have this shape one copy layer selected, we will merge it down by hitting control E or command E. And now we're just going to duplicate this and move it off to the side for the far left arrow that we saw in the logo. So we'll just duplicate that again with control J and we'll move that off to the left using the move tool while holding shift. And so we're just going to zoom in and we want this just barely kind of touching the, the inner part of the arrow right there. And we're going to bring up the transform tool by hitting Control T or Command T again if you're on a Mac computer. And up here we'll just change the width and height to maybe 75% for both of those. And then we'll just commit those transformations again. And so uh, that's looking pretty good just as it is. So we will go over here and merge these layers together again by hitting Control E. And we'll just move those off to the side just a little bit while holding the Shift key. And then duplicate them with Control J. Transform them with Control T and right click and flip it horizontally and we're going to move these off to the right while holding the shift key and then again just commit those transformations merge the layers together and we will use that trick that we did before to center this up by selecting the canvas with control A clicking these two little icons and then deselecting with control D and as you can see this is kind of running off the canvas a little bit so we'll bring up the transform tool and we'll size it down by dragging in one of the corners while holding the Alt and the Shift key, or the Option and the Shift key if you're on a Mac computer. And so that's looking pretty good just as it is, so we'll commit those transformations. And now we're ready to make this into a brush, which is actually pretty easy. We'll just go over here to the right side and right click and flatten the image. And so that should be set to a background locked layer like so. And now we're ready to turn it into a brush. So to actually make this into a brush, we'll have to select the entire canvas by hitting Control A or Command A. And then we'll have to go up to Edit, Define Brush Preset right there. And when this little brush name thing comes up, we'll just uh, give it a little name of Insignia. And we'll hit OK. And so now if you swap over to your brush tool, it should be set as your uh, brush right there. So that's all there is to that. Now you've got your own little insignia brush right there. But uh, just make sure that at some point you remember to go to the little brush menu up here, go off to the side arrow, and save these brushes as something like maybe default with insignia or something like that because that's going to include all of these other brushes from your default set. So unless you want to go through and delete all these one by one, you're going to be stuck with those. Um, yep, that's all there is to it. Okay, so I hope you guys were able to follow along pretty well and got the general idea of how to make our insignia. This is pretty much the exact way that I made it when I first came up with the idea for our logo. There's probably a better way to do it, but either way, this works, and I hope you learned something new from it. If you haven't watched our previous tutorial, the Pop Retro Wallpaper tutorial, I highly suggest you go back and watch that. It's a pretty neat little effect. I'm sure you guys would like it. And also, if you guys like rock music, I highly suggest checking out our music video, Hot Mess in a Dress. And if you like that video, you should definitely go check out their Kickstarter video and go support them, donate a little bit of money, and get some fabulous prizes and whatnot. And once you're done with all that, you know, check out some more, like this video, favorite it, whatever you want, check out our fan page, and so on and so forth, blah blah blah. That's the end of the tutorial, so I will see you next time.